So we've got our quickie point of sale system up and running. We can add products to an order. We can list those items in that order. Um, but there's a big piece that's missing here. We need to be able to actually list or show the total for the order. Um, and I also would like to clean up some of the formatting and styling inside of the list box itself. So let's go ahead and get those things happening. So we'll stop, start by stopping the app. So the first thing I want to do is I want to utilize uh, a piece of formatting um, functionality within .NET. So with this price, we can wrap it inside of a method call. And that method is string.format curly bracket, or I'm sorry, um, parenthesis, quote, curly bracket, zero, colon, C. Close curly bracket, close quote, comma, and then you use our price variable, and then close parenthesis. So what this does is it says, I want to create a formatted string. So using string.format, I want to create a formatted string. And zero, inside the curly brackets, is the first value being passed into string.format. So in this case, it's price. We're only passing in one. And then the colon C is a notation that you can look up inside the MSDN documentation for string format. But what it does for you is it will format that number, that price, into a currency value, C. C for currency. And that will give us something that is the actual currency representation of that number. So instead of it just being a dollar sign with a 0 0.5 in the front or a dollar sign with a one in front, it'll give you, um, it, if for US, it's, you know, dollars and cents. It'll be 1.00 or 0 0.50 and give you a full representation of that dollars and cents. So that's just a small thing for my own sake um, that I wanted to put into place. But bigger than that is being able to show that subtotal. So I'm going to do this with two labels. The first one we'll say, we'll call it, we'll just say total. And then the second label will actually present the total. So the text in there will be empty, but we need to give this label a name. Then we'll go up to name in our properties dialog and we'll call it LBL total. And I'm gonna go ahead and modify some of the font characteristics as well. So instead of it just being 8.25, I'm gonna make it 11, just so it stands out a little bit. And I'll make a bolt. That may be humongous, and we can make changes, obviously. But let's start there. So we've got our drop point for our total. But first, how do we get that total? So we can do it a few ways. We're looping through all of these items in the sales order, and we're adding them to the list. So as part of that, we could go through and say, keep track of the order total and do all that math, and then represent that total for the order. And that's all well and good, and that's definitely a way that can be done. But I'd like to encapsulate that order summary, summing functionality within the sales order model itself. So that way, if that changes, I don't have to go back to this form and any other form and change how that order is totaled. Instead, the sales order does that work and knows that logic, and I always have to just go to one place to change it. So to do that, I'm going to create a method or a function. And that method will be public, and it will return a float, right, which is a kind of a money value. And we'll call it, the method name will be calculate total. And the parentheses designate this as a method. So we'll end it with parentheses. We're not put passing any values in. If we were, they would go in the parentheses. And then we have curly brackets. So the goal here is to return some number. Now to do this, we need to loop through items, capture the unit price times quantity, and add it to the total. Or to, not it, uh, we need to add it to a total variable. So we need some sort of variable. And the last step is to return the total variable. I'm going to kind of put that in quotes just so you understand it. That is, the variable will be the total. <laughs> All right. All right, so 
So let's start out by creating that total variable. So I'm going to declare my variables up here. So I'll have float total. And we'll set that equal to zero. And then we'll set up our loop. So this loop will be another for loop. So int i equals zero, semicolon while i is less than items.count. And then we'll do i plus plus. And we'll do that capture step inside of here. So we'll say the total e plus equals. So we'll take whatever is currently in total and we're going to add something new to it. And what we'll take is items. We'll take the specific item dot. And we're going to take the quantity times that same item. So items of i dot price semicolon. So we're multiplying the quantity of the item that we're at in the loop times the price of that. And then we're taking that sum or that product and then we're adding it to totals. So we're basically looping through each item in our items collection to so our order sales order items. We're looping through that list and we're taking the quantity of each item times its price, getting that total and then taking that number and putting it into the overall sales order total. And then the final step is to return our total variable. So return total. Now, there's a lot going on in here, and I know I kind of talked through it, but let me kind of go back and recap. So we created a function called calculate total. Your function has two parts to it that you have to keep in mind. There's the return type, which is on the left side of the name. And in this case, it's a float. So we're returning a float. So whatever that data type is, then that is the variable that we need to be returning back is of that same type. Or it needs to be a descendant of that type. So if you're using inheritance. Um, if there were any values that we were passing in, we would have them in between the parentheses and they would be comma separated with type, comma, variable name, comma, the second type, comma, or second type and variable name. Um, so you'll see those in, in later examples. But then here we created a local variable called total and it is a float. So this is eventually going to be our return value and we default it to zero. And then what we do is we set up a loop and we loop through all of those sales order items and we're going through one item at a time. And as we go through, we grab that item. So items of I is how this is read or described. So basically we take I, our loop counter, and we go through each item in our items collection and we grab the quantity and the price of those and we multiply them together so we can figure out what the total cost for that item is. And then we take that and add it to total, which is to represent the order total. So then that total variable, once we looped all the way through all of these, that order total then is returned as the calculated total for this entire order. So now that we have that functionality in place, we can take order or calculate total and we can jump back to our form. And after we basically dump all of our order items. The last step we can have here is LBL total dot text equals, and I'm going to use that string dot format again, and we'll do another zero colon C with the curly brackets, comma, um, and then this will be order dot calculate total. So the way that this is going to work is it's kind of a inverted chain is the first thing that happens is the order dot calculate total method gets called and that method gets called the total for the order is calculated and then that float number is returned. So this actually becomes a float number. Then string dot format is called and it says format that float number using the C colon C format notation. So that generates then a monetary currency number. And that value is then stored in our label as text. So if we hit start, 
and we'll do our same pack of gum for 50 cents and we will buy one and hit add so now we have one pack of gum for 50 cents our total is 50 cents let's add a second thing um, let's say toilet paper and we'll buy some toilet paper I don't even know what toilet paper costs anymore but we'll say it's four dollars and we're buying it for our frat so we'll buy 40 rolls we'll hit add so we're buying 40 rolls at four dollars a piece and that math ends up being 160 dollars and then there's the 50 cents for our pack of gum so there's our total for the order is 160 dollars and 50 cents uh, we'll go ahead and add a uh, soda again and that was a dollar and we'll just buy one of those and we'll hit add order so now we're at 160 150. so our adding items to our order and having it calculate the total is working correctly using our calculate total method so hopefully this gives you a good introductory view of how to go about building a windows form application and utilizing some of the functionality of the c sharp language um, C Sharp is like many other C-based languages, including C, C, C++, Java, and C Sharp, and JavaScript. So if you're familiar with those, the syntax for those languages and these languages are practically identical. Uh, so hopefully this was a good starting point. Uh, hopefully you come with questions this week, and look forward to your questions, and look forward to you working on the assignment.